I am recording. All right. Um, okay. So a quick recap from last session. Uh, you guys all managed to make your way through the desert while uh, trying to avoid avoid a a a T Rex, which uh, kind of went really bad. Um, turned into something that was pretty comedic, you know, with like the zigzagging of people running back and forth trying to stay out of this thing's reach. And uh, but you guys, you know, you guys bested it. And then uh, you know, you continue traveling throughout the day and into the night. And um, I don't even remember. Then you guys uh, pretty much wound up back at the. Oh yeah, it was into the evening. Okay, yeah. So you guys wound up back in the bot. You know where um, everybody just kind of like relaxed and unwound for a little bit. You know, um, spoke a little bit, hung out in the pools while uh, Jacob was, you know, hanging out with his wife. And um, <clears throat> you guys all, uh, it's uh, it's morning, everybody kind of ate, and uh, you all went down into this small little ritual chamber, which I described as having a 25-foot diameter. But when I made the map, I made it a square. So now it's a 25-foot square. And... Uh, yeah, so um, as the ritual was completed, everybody was, you know, positioned around this room. And um, as the diamond sunk, or the diamonds sunk into the body of Alcaeus and a breath was taken, a, uh, a mysterious uh, black robed skeleton with, like, red, red bones had appeared, you know, over the body. And um, that's kind of like where we left off. Um... So let's switch it over. All right. So everybody here, go ahead and put yourselves wherever you want to be. You guys can see the map, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's just a simple. It's it's now a thirty foot square room. You know, um, and the walls have all these like beautiful designs and like hieroglyphics and whatnot, and the floors are, you know, they seem to be high end, and the door is shut, you know, which is right here. I think I have it open still on the dynamic lighting, but it's shut, and that leads to you know a thin staircase leading back up to the main part of the house. So once everybody's positioned wherever they want to be, let me know, and then we'll take it from there. Far away. <laughs> Everybody ready? Uh, yes, but no. I'm all good. All right, cool. All right, so as the spell is being cast and this thing appears, let me show everybody what appears. Yes, show me my next tattoo. Ah, <laughs> oh, beautiful. Excellent. All right. So everybody sees this thing appear, you know, hovering over Alcaeus's newly, you know, breathing body. Um, also, everybody saw an immediate physical change happen to Alcaeus as that first breath was taken. Uh, the fur... You know, instead of being that like golden brown, got a little bit darker, and his hair, you know, like the actual main part is like a darker red now, and um, it just seems like um, a slightly darker version of of what was seen prior to, you know, the the raised dead, you know, taking hold. So as this thing appears, you know, the there's like that statue, you know, against the the north wall over there. Um, that quickly changes out, and, uh, and the room starts glowing underneath the altar. Right. And we are going to roll initiative. <laughs> so just remember to go ahead and click on the tokens before, and uh, let me... Oof. Change up the Oof. music for a little bit. Let's see if I can find something a little bit faster. Or or different. Oh, 
<laughs> of course. Uh, it wouldn't let me roll at disadvantage, Eric, but take the okay. lower number if you want to input that, because I'm still, I still have one point of exhaustion. Yeah, no problem. Um, do it for Alcaeus also. And uh, remember, you get. I think you get a negative four. Minus four. Yes. Minus four, minus four, minus four to everything. I had to put some global modifiers in. Listen, I'm not, this is not my first death rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> so minus like four. Rodeo, right? <laughs> it's a good rodeo. Minus four. Okay. Yeah, I so this. Minus four. There we go. Ooh. The... Okay. Good stuff. Okay, and then, uh. Okay. Um, alright, so this thing comes and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> this one is mine. And uh, Pip, you're up first. <laughs> Actually, before you oh, even do right. that, you hear the, the woman, you know, the wife, which you um, you can kind of see her face a little bit, and her eyes are glowing, and she just screams out, "Quick, heal him!" And that's it. Go ahead, you get to go. Oh, Quick, no. heal him. Oh no. Uh, all right. Now for everybody except Alcaeus this creature is like semi-transparent you know like non-corporeal so it's ghostly nice <laughs> Hold on, i'll just put my global modifiers in real quick uh, okay go switch character sheets here Okay, Piff, what are we doing with you? Uh, <laughs> I am going to uh, do why, why as well, might as well just burn everything with Pip. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use this and I'm going to uh, Oh cool, which one are you going to do? I think I'm going to do Chalice. <laughs> So 10, 10. All right, it's really well lit in here, so there's really not too much of a notice as far as the lighting goes. Um, and then a bonus action. All right, so as he, uh, so everybody sees this this raccoon humanoid quickly morph into what appears to be just like a bunch of like a constellation, almost. So imagine um, like a, a goblet. You know, or a, a you know a chalice, um, you know, so almost like an Orion if you're familiar with uh, stars. So you'll see a couple of stars, like you know what would be at you know at the top, and then it kind of tapers down to around where the waist would be. You know, you see a couple of stars going across there, and then it gets wider again at the bottom. All right, so let's see. Uh, restore hit points to a creature. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. uh, cool. I've got to prep. <laughs> uh, so I'll have to wait for it next turn. Uh, but for an action, um, right, so I will. On. You can regain. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, when I have to cast... cast a spell. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that restores hit points of creature, so I have to do. Uh, but for my action, I'm going to use. Getting bolt. Let's go, Guiding Bolt. Hey! Okay, cool. All right, yeah, so a uh, quick, you know, incantation comes from, you know, where the stars are just kind of floating there, you know, and a, uh, a bolt of radiant energy comes out. And do me a favor, pull up Guiding Bolt real quick, like the actual verbiage. The actual verbiage? Yes, please. Uh, okay. Oh, Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so this bolt winds up hitting this creature and it like kind of like like uh sadistically laughs, you know, as this radiant energy starts glowing around it. And it quickly takes notice of Pip in the corner. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's my turn. <laughs> okay, cool. And then Okay, cool. Lyster, you're up. 
Are we all going to attempt to heal him before we realize what's happening? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, at least your stomach's going to try and heal him, too. Uh, sure. Sure. Leister will try and... Oh, it's so quiet. Can people hear me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that as yes. Oh, yeah. I got paranoid. Okay. Uh, Leister will try and get close to Elkaeus' body. If, if he can, to just... Tappy tap. Tippy tip tap. Cool goth thing, please don't hit me. Pretty please. And then he will try and cast Cure Wounds. Okay. To try and help. <laughs> Oof. <Okay. laughs> Alright, okay. So. Um, you, you feel a little bit of holy energy come, you know, trickling into your body and uh, you get plus five hit points. <laughs> I'm so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Uh, I, uh, what else can I do? Uh, that was my action. Uh, uh, I could hunters mark this thing at the same time, right? It's uh -huh. a bonus action. Right? Yep. Okay, then I will put hunters mark on it, please. Very cool. All right. It it my turn. Thank you. All right, Volver, you're up. All right. Um, gonna reposition myself right next to it. It's like since I can't heal the since I can't heal the lion, I'll try to take you out. And as a bonus action, I am going to uh, call it Hexblade's Curse. All right, cool. On the entity. Pull it up real quick so I can see it. What's that? Pull it up real quick so I can see it. Take a swing at him with my uh, with my sword. Cool. Roll it. Does he get advantage? You get advantage. I do have. I yeah. do have. On the first one. That's right. Right. All right. Cool. That's a hit. Um, go ahead and tell me the extra damage you do. Uh, let's see. What is that? That's a nine. I also I actually didn't mark it, but I crit on a nineteen. Oh, nice. Uh, because of the curse. Yep. Yeah, that's um, a crit. So... So, yeah, just roll actually, the extra... Yeah, so roll the extra D8 plus all of your mods. Just add it all together. Let's see, I think that... I think the 10 already had the mods, so let me, I'll just roll a D8 by itself, and that'll be the... So that's the second D8. All right. So, okay, let me see. Because um, my mods are already in the 10. So your, your charisma... Let's see. It says that's you get bonus four. of damage rolls equal to your proficiency bonus. Like so Plus another three. So eight, that would be 18 total damage. 18 total. Okay, very cool. All right. So that's the first one. Go ahead and... One regular. Roll your second attack. Nice. All right, and then that gets your charisma. Um, hold on, then it gets another your proficiency bonus. So how much more do I add? Um, the plus another. Three. I think it's another third. I think it's an, uh, yeah plus. Sorry, um. It's weird how because of that less thing that's been added to my thing that's not come off. It's making my calculation. Um, I think it's another eleven damage. Your mod is plus four right now. Proficiency mod. Uh, my 
or I'm sorry, no, ten. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, so you come quickly, you know, and you curse it, and you come with the first slash, cuts it through like really nice. It just tears through like this ethereal fabric, and then it quickly like turns with its like massive scythe in its hand, you know, and uh, it tries to block the second one, and you get like right underneath its blade, and it just laughs again. All right, uh, anything else? Did it actually feel like I was connecting with something, or was I just kind of going? There, there was some resistance as you went through. Uh, nope, that is everything. All right. Um, okay. All right, so Jakob is going to quickly take a step back. And these two, um, like eldritch tornado bursts come out of his hands. And they go and wind up flying towards the target. Um, first one hits, second one misses. Why the hell is that not? Can you guys see that roll? It's supposed to be, uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we see it's it. It's supposed to be private. All right, whatever. Okay. Right. So everyone can feel, like, this, this heat coming from, like, the sandblast that's coming, you know, from Jakob's hands. Um, okay. That's that. And then she will come in. She gets closer. Come on. Hmm. There we go. All right. Uh, okay, so you get healed six points. Yeah. And she comes and she stands back and, you know, she, she grabs... Uh, you know, this holy symbol of the weather or something close to it. And she starts praying. Um, okay, now it's gonna go. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot about um, this guy. All right, he will shoot and blast a fire at it. This guy. Oh. Yeah, so he quickly points out his blade and is, uh, it glows on fire and it shoots out. And he's like, the fucking Leon is back. And, uh, <laughs> and then, okay, we got this. Oh, okay. That hits. And uh, everyone sees this huge, uh, you know, bolt of flame come and hit this thing pretty hard in its back. Okay, so that's that. Okay, now. Two, three. Oh, that's okay. All right, so this thing, is, it takes its scythe and it just sweeps it around in this huge arc over its head. And like all of this, this like red uh, necrotic like energy just kind of like spins around in this huge circle. Um, Fulver, Alcaeus, and Leicester. Alright, hey, uh, let me get hey dexterity now. saving hey. throws, please. Oh no. Wait, am I good at those? I don't know. Let That's it come back. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going DC 15. If you succeed, you take half. No, nope, and that's a crit fail. Holy shit. Uh, sometimes being a ranger is good. Okay. Uh, so, um. Okay, so half of 19 is 8. Alright, so Lysa, you're going to take 8. Um, okay. holy shit. And then Fulver, <laughs> take 36, 38, 38. And, uh, okay, so you take 38. <laughs> what? No! No! So... Both of you drop. Uh, How many spells do I have? Oh, no. Okay. Wait. Uh, I have four spells. I could do cure wounds four times and give you, like, three hit points. All right. Um, okay. Okay. So let me get a death save with advantage, please. Yeah. Oh no. Let's do it all over again. Uh, I don't. I don't know if the minus four affects death saves though. 
Uh, I don't think so, because it's not. There's no con mod. It's just a D20 flat. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and yeah. roll again, just in case. Okay, cool. Nice. So go ahead and uh, mark your character with the appropriate thing. Pip, you're up. Uh. Uh, bonus action. I will do a healing word. Uh, let's do it at uh, third level. Why not? Okay. On uh, Fulver. Okay. Fulver will get the healing word. Uh, and that will be... Uh, uh, that'll be ten. Now, do you also... Heal and with then, your chalice. Yes, and then the chalice healing will go to uh, Alcaeus. For, oh, that's so badass. Uh, oh, I didn't want to do that. That was just All right, so uh, D8 plus your wisdom. Okay, it's Very just cool. ten. It's another ten to Alcaeus. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. Both of you are up and prone. Um, that's your bonus action. Very cool. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then as an action. Uh, I guess I'll just chuck a little produce flame at him. Okay. Yeah. Alright, cool. That hits. Yeah, so you say whatever you say, and you know, if Fover gets up, and some of that energy gets transferred over to Alcaeus, and then uh, just for good measure, you chuck out a little flame. And it winds up hitting this thing, you know, like on its shoulder, and it just kind of like pats it off. <sighs> okay. Okay. Anything else? I don't know. I'm just crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. My screen went black. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Leicester. Okay, Leicester will back up a little bit and then try and take shots at this thing and hope they don't just whiz through. Shots, 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 shots. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah uh, the first one just goes completely through it. You know, um, if Fover wasn't mm -hmm. prone, it would have hit him. And uh, the second one kind of like it goes through, but it shows a little bit of resistance as it goes through. Um, it does not seem as effective as you would have thought. Hey. Anything else? Uh, did I? What, were either of them? Oh wait! Was I able to yeah, add yeah. the hunter's mark? Yeah, add the yeah add the second one. Yep. What is it again? I've just blanked. It's a D six. Six. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Cool. Teeny, a teeny little bit more. All right. Hey, every little bit. Uh, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's right. it. Okay. Fulver, you're prone on the ground. This thing is hovering over you. No flanking. Okay. All right. No flanking. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Draw a blank on that. Uh, I'm going to use my half, half movement and get up. Okay. And, uh. Yeah. No. Uh, trying to and save, this, save this from I am, so we're going to go all out. Uh, I'm going to use. Uh, a bonus action to cast Branding Smite. Okay. And then take a swing. All right. You're, is your curse still up? Hold on, let me see. No. You die or curse oh, is you lost it. Okay. All right. Incapacitated, so curse is gone. Sorry. All right, no worries. Okay, Branding Smite. Roll up. Holy what shit. What is that oh. second number? Oh, you know, I may have done the global modifiers wrong, so let me just roll it. Thank you. Just go by the 50. Okay. Uh, that that, I does, think I did that does hit. Barely, but yes, it does. And then add the branding spike to that. Sorry, I'll have to look at that because I must have done that wrong. It's okay. No worries. Uh, but then add 11 radiant damage to it. 11 radiant. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. 
and uh, it, it, it cannot, it is glowing with torchlight, cannot become visible. Okay, very cool. Yeah, um, that, that radiant damage seems to, uh, you know, have, have uh, hurt it a little bit, kind of like that, uh, that guiding bolt that came earlier. Um, so, let's see. Right, so and, just uh, as like a free, just from noticing that, just you know, if you've got any way to do some holy damage, it seems to work. Right, anything else from you? And that'll be it. All right. Um, she okay. Um, two actually, two more, two more bolts of this like hot sandy energy. Oops. Okay. Um, So uh, one hits, and then um, the woman will come up again and do another cure light. All right, another seven points. Okay, yes, you get healed. Yay! All right, and then she steps back, and she's just screaming out at it. And she's like, "Get out of my home!" You know. Um, okay, then. Uh, um, Nat will sit there and try and shoot it again. Yes, that's going to be a hit. Okay. Some more fire damage comes and hits this thing. And uh, he seems to be taking a particular interest in, in Nathan. How convenient. How convenient indeed. Okay, so that, 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 that. all right. Um, he will actually. Okay, so this thing kind of like phases out. It becomes more transparent, you know, and it just floats through the altar in the middle and comes over to this side, you know. And um, it says in like a, like an old common, I guess, you know. And it's like I've not seen one of you in eons. And um. He just kind of looks back at Alcaeus over his shoulder, and then he looks back at uh, at Nate, and it just says, "A trade for now," and it just comes over to his body and just completely engulfs it. And it's like, um, have, has anybody here seen Beastmaster? I know, I know, Landon did. Anybody? Mm-hmm. All right, they're, they're like these flying yeah. creatures. They're these like kind of like flying creatures. Or whatever and uh, pretty oh, much it like things. wraps Ugh. yeah it just completely wraps up the um, you know Nathan's body and he's like kind of struggling for a little bit and you can see it underneath the cloak you know and then it's like everybody looks at the floor and you can see like like oil and um, I guess other mechanical fluids just kind of starting to drop you know onto the floor where uh, um, where where Nathan was and then it quickly turns around to Alcaeus and it says, uh, you owe me. And then it disappears. Oh, no. Nathan's gone. And then, uh, and then Max Raccoon just kind of like starts short circuiting and crumbles to the ground and like immediately like rusts and just turns into like dust. Oh, well, well, my idea of adopting a, adopting a, a Max. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone starts seeing the, the statue kind of like slowly start to like the glow starts fading away and then the, the sigils on the ground you know it's like they were kind of like spinning on each other and uh, that eventually fades away and it's back to the regular room that's it Baby runs to the Alcaeus. Baby. Oh, well, that wasn't fun. And what the Nat. fuck? <laughs> Just oh. towards where Nat, where Nat was. <laughs> oh. 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 Is that... Is that expected to happen? Oh. Sometimes, yes. When you're dealing with bringing... A spirit back from the Deadlands. Sometimes the 
the, the I guess the things in charge are are not okay with it. This is all fairly recent too, within the last three to four years, before magic started changing like this. Oh. And then Yaakov is, you know, honey, are you okay? <laughs> and she's, you know, yes, I'm fine. And then she'll come up and start, you know, like looking over all Caius's body, you know, like kind of doing an examination. Are you okay, sir? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm just take a little bit to uh, recover. Yes, yes, it's good. Um, that you get some rest over the next couple of days. And uh, Tyler, put negative one charisma whenever you get a chance. <laughs> I don't want to Wait, he's our charisma guy now. No. No. What are you talking about? He's the charisma guy. He, he was. <laughs> well, secretly. And everyone can kind of see, <clears throat> as Alkaeus speaks, there's like this uh, that that like red necrotic energy that was floating around, you know, uh, chasing the scythe. The scythe when you know the uh, that that death thing or whatever made that circular attack. That's kind of like coming out of Alcaeus's mouth a little bit, like very very faint. Meister looks for a breath mint. Hmm. <laughs> I've changed so many things now. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> that negative one. <laughs> uh, I mean, the good thing is, after your long rest, whenever you get that, you will be able to level up. It's not going to oh. get that one back. <laughs> True. Uh, Upon, upon waking back up, okay, this becomes a little more gruff. Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Do you need a Do you need a hand getting up? No. Uh, okay. Fine. All right. He looks over to his wife. You know, you did great. Well, thank you. All right, uh, let's let's get out of here. It's a it's a little colder than uh, than I prefer. And then he'll you know. All right. Start walking over, open up. It the doesn't door. exactly seem to be a pleasant room to stay in, so I'm with you. Mm. Well, normally it's it's quite nice, but you know this was an an uninvited guest that we were unfortunately expecting. Mm. And then, Thank um, you for risking it, though. Uh, if if not for if not for you, I would not be here. So it is the the least I can do. Uh, and they'll they'll go upstairs. Whoever leaves last, please close the door behind you. Slowly wait for the Alcaeus. Yeah, uh, Baby is definitely just tapping on him, trying to imitate the inspection that the wife was doing. Like he <laughs> smells different. She's just she's just busying herself sniffing. Uh, actually, he does smell yeah. a little different. No, he does. He smells. He smells uh, yeah, he does smell. You know, a little different. Not as nice as he did before. But it's it's uh, only because uh, she has like a keen nose can she like really pick it up. Mm-hmm. Well, we yeah, got someone back. Yeah, I'll sit up. It'll probably take a little bit just to catch my breath, kind of regain my senses, kind of taking the surroundings. <sighs> Yeah, last thing you remember was running out of the the gorge. Mm-hmm. You know, then everything went dark, and then you went to, uh, I guess, you know, you saw something similar to what Esbjorn saw. 
which is great because I don't mm. have to tell you because you already know. Yeah, you don't have to tell. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yep. And if anybody's out there watching us on YouTube and you want to know what it is, check out the Epic Safe. Look at, the, the, the Epic. Look at the other campaign. Yeah, where the I Epic Safeguard, Safeguard campaign, which I can't seem to say right right now. So there you go. So, you guys can do whatever you like, whenever you like. I can just take a little bit, maybe like five, ten minutes, just to sit up, kind of breathe, take multiple deep breaths, kind of. So, Archaeus, is it? Aye, it is. And you are? Pleasure to meet you. The name's Fulver. Mm -hmm. ah, Turtleizer, where's the rest of them? Oh, um, I'm afraid they're gone. Gone, like, like shopping, or gone as in, like, <laughs> gone? Uh, more in the, the swallowed by the void type of way. So my s attempt at saving everybody was for naught, you're saying? I'm afraid so. That's wonderful. To, to be fair, okay, as if you traveled with Leicester before, like, they're good. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you see Baby. Baby's kind of happy to see you, I guess. I'm non, like, just, just like had it petting Baby. Like, I'm not even thinking about it, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, apparently, uh, whatever swallowed up a couple of your previous companions spit up myself and Pip back there in the corner. Mm. Or hi. And I will step right away so we can have a good, so that the raccoon and the lion can have a conversation. The raccoon and lion <laughs> are not conversing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> I need your two characters to fall madly in love right now, please. I need I need that reenactment. Thank you. <laughs> Never seen somebody with such fur. Get over here. Uh. <laughs> thank you, Get thank you, here. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Fanfics fan write themselves. Yep. Yeah, wonderful. The furries crying with joy. <laughs> <laughs> Take baby with me, kind of. Mm -hmm. Just uh, slowly so make perfect. my way out. Just mm -hmm. Pip will give his consolation for him. And Pip, I do have a question for you. Did, did were you just stars? That. You say that like that's normal. For me, yeah. Doesn't he come from stars? Coming from stars versus becoming stars. Seems like two very different things. I mean, I come from a forest, but you're not going to see me turning into a tree anytime soon. I come from oh. a forest. I wish I could be a tree. That'd be quite handy. Yeah, then you could be naked all the time, and not worry about social conformities as I walk out the door. Hmm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's just, just Vietnam flashbacks of you guys leaving the tub. <laughs> I think I missed something. Um, I am hungry, though, so maybe we can go eat. Mm, yes, let's get you some food. Everybody. 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 Yes, yep, everybody. make sure to close the door on the way out like a civilized person. No, we've been naked. Close the door. All right. <laughs> Except baby. Oh no. So you all go upstairs and you know wander throughout the hallways, you know, of this house, getting back to or going to whichever room you would like to go to. Uh, the dining hall. Okay. Dead boy's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, you know, hard for you to like kind of walk through the hallways. You're, you know, obviously exhausted and just tired and. Um, 
you can still smell the food, you know, from, from breakfast about, you know, an hour or so ago and, you know, making you whatever you want to eat will not be a problem. So, yeah, uh, so you get to the dining room and, you know. But I got, for the ritual, did they keep everything on my body? Am I still, like, armored and weaponed or? Mm-hmm. Okay, then, uh, yeah. as soon as I get to some place, I'm just going to start taking it off, because it feels awfully heavy right now. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, when you woke up, your your hand was firmly, you know, um, gripped on your jade boar hammer, and you were ready for battle. Um, all right, so actually, I forgot to mention, um, just, you know, as that thing disappeared, um, there were a couple of items left where, um, where Nathan was standing. Uh, I just gotta figure out what he had on him. Um, I know the, the Give jade... us it all. Let's see. All of it. Wait, Give some it. of it... I know he had the ring. There was a, a blue coral ring. That yeah, fell. he had that that he identified. Um, what else? Was that the swimming? That was the swimming, wasn't it? Did give you swim speed or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then there was also... I don't know what, if he left stuff has, upstairs or... Pip has the staff. Not that much. Yeah, uh, there was a, overall the items were a jade necklace, the locket, mm -hmm. and then the blue coral ring and the and the staff. Okay, right, right, all right. So was that jade necklace left upstairs in his room? Uh, I, I don't believe so. I don't remember. I I know he didn't attune himself to it. I know that. So. I don't know. Let's assume he left it in the room. But I know he was wearing the ring, so that fell. That's it. I'll make sure I pick that up uh, since we knew he had it. Sure. There's a, it's okay, I'll pick it up. Every I forget, did that have, does that ring, was that a named item in the end? Uh, like, yeah, it's just, it's just a ring of here? swimming. Ring of swimming. Um, it does not require okay. attunement. Oh, okay. And I believe that gives a 40 foot swim speed. Let me confirm. Um, yes. Yep. 40 foot swim speed on that. No attunement required. Uh, when I am, when uh, Al Alcaeus, for right now, let's switch my name. There we go, Alcaeus. Uh, when I'm taking off my armor, do I see any more like uh, degradation? Um, like on the on the armor itself? Yeah, from like what I remember from before remember, I died. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. It does okay. look a little bit more pitted and whatnot. Has it been a full week yet since you guys arrived? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. Probably getting close, but I don't think Probably yet. Probably getting close, yeah, but at the end of a week, um, it'll lose one point of armor. So I know it's pretty close if we're not there already. Mm. Just like in real life, I have no sense of time. <laughs> So, um, I think it's only been, I think we're only on like day three since I showed up. Right. And then before that, one, two, it might be close to a week now. Maybe I'll, I'll go back and check, but yeah, it's, uh, I know it's close to a week. If not just past or something, just kick me while I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after I take off my armor and probably go back to my room first just to change clues into something more that doesn't smell like death. Uh, I think that's the room that Nathan kind of took over, right? I think yeah. so. Okay, think yeah, so. yeah. So you'll see, you know, it's, it's slightly different than when you left it, you know, um, and um, I don't know where he would have put it, but let's just assume it's there, like half hidden or something. You can see the, just jade, in the, the drawer. jade necklace or, yeah, somewhere, I don't know. Under a pillow. I think he, I think he said he was gonna like tuck it into his pack or something like that. I just didn't remember if he had his pack on him or not. I don't remember if he had it on him or, oh. or if he left it in the room. I don't remember. 
We will find yeah, it eventually. Specify it. Oh, whatever. You know, I mean, it's yeah. I, it either fell in the in the ritual chamber, you know, if he had it on him, or it's just kind of chilling in the room, which let's just assume that's the case right now. Yeah. Okay. So if he has anything left in the room, I'll try to, like, pack it up. Uh, clothes or whatever. I know he was... Was I there for... I don't think I'll case I don't was there think for, you no. know. No, I don't no, know. I, don't think but I just know. think he's a normal dude, so I'm, like, looking for clothes. Uh, trying to pack up whatever he's left. And I guess if I stumble upon the amulet, I'll just tuck it away and ask the group when we meet up for okay. food. Um, getting out my armor... Uh, ringing a servant asking them to maybe clean it uh, because sure. it's been you know, attached to a dead body for a few days. Probably smells like death. Uh, death and, and scorpions. Death and scorpions. <laughs> uh, and then eventually wake my way down for food. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, so you spend a little bit of time doffing your armor, you know, doing whatever in the room. And- um, just in order to save a little bit of time, somebody would have come to check up on you and, you know, took any requests for, you know, what you want to eat so they could have it ready by the time you get down. Uh, anybody else want to do anything in particular? Uh, Leister probably would have just asked where he can go and find more arrows because he's getting pretty low. Um, who, who do you want to ask? Just like one of the servants or? Yeah, just can you direct me towards where I can get more arrows? Um, you could find the arrows in any marketplace. They're just, like fairly common items. So we can, we've got we've got some disposal. We've got a little more uh, gold between us at this point. We could all at some point once we're uh, once Alcaeus is rested up a little bit, we could all head out to the market see if there's anything we need before we head over uh, with Jakob later to to the. Uh, to the school, to the academy. Mm, yes, that's true. I guess we won't be fighting any more death the things quite so soon, hopefully. So, so you hope. And so I hope too, if that's not clear. Yes. Yes. That was weird. Have you seen those? I have not. not I, I wasn't quite a fan of that. A little, a little weird, a little creepy. Um, everybody, let me get either a history check with disadvantage or a religion check. Regular, your choice. Uh, and then apply, <laughs> you know, disadvantage or whatever if you have that for whatever reason. Both would be disadvantage. Both are minuses. Mm. Okay, so disadvantage, no matter what, for me. Any, uh, any, any, mo. To tag your find the two. If he that's hollers, let him go. Four in that one. No. Okay. One in that? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I don't have I don't have the skill modifier up. I have to put that on. That's a minus four for that roll. Let's see what I can get for this other guy here. Uh go. Okay. Um, Leister, you rolled insight. I need religion or roll? history. Oh, oops. No worries. I, right. I got it's distracted. Right below oh, okay. It's right, right below history. Yeah, I, cl- I misclicked. Okay. Uh, actually, <laughs> Oh, that's here, hilarious. Yeah, um, the person who rolled the highest is Alcaeus, and he kind of experienced it firsthand. So, okay, continue. <laughs> no additional information. I didn't think so. That's fair. Okay. It is good to know that apparently if we have to, hopefully we don't have to do anything like that again, but if we ever did, good to know that that's something to prepare for, apparently. Yes, true, true, it's good to know to have a weapon ready. I can tell you one thing, it hurts like a bitch when you get hit by the scythe. It, 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 it stung a little, yes. Well, it's not fun. Pretty sure I almost joined Alcaeus there. That would have been very counterproductive. Um, that would have been quite heartbreaking. Yeah, then you'd have to deal with just everyone around you just dying. 
I don't very much a lot kidding. at this point. Very much mm-hmm. kidding with you, Leister. Don't take that seriously. Leister's little big ears just droop a little bit. Don't <laughs> take that seriously. When you've lived for over 300 years, you get darker humor every once in a while. It's little on the mark, though. I can't help but consider that. The main thing to focus on is the fact that we... We got Okaeus back. Mm. What do you... That, that he's back with... He's back, at, back with the land of the living. And... We make sure he gets uh, gets back to his right self. Mm. Yes. It was such a shame to see... Such a person fall. Gotta be honest, the way you described the, the way you described him when we had a brief conversation on our way here, he seemed like a nice sounded like a nice fellow, but he seems a little gruff around the edges. Could be because he died. I understand that, but mm, he was always quiet. I'm afraid I didn't learn much about him quite yet. So is everybody like kind of downstairs eating or doing whatever, hanging out? Hanging out, waiting yeah. for Alcaeus to get kind of settled. And I figured out, I figured this would be equivalent of a short rest that could use some hit dice to heal. Sure, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, whoever wants to take a short rest, go ahead and do that. It's probably going to take like Alcaeus like at least a half an hour to like. Yeah, just, I mean, just taking off the armor, you know, yeah. is a process. So. Baby tries to help you take off the armor. No, <laughs> it <boy>. takes five <laughs> minutes less. <laughs> Or five minutes more, depending on how optimistic you are. <clears throat> it's okay, it's if you know, if you want to take a short rest or whatever, you know, it's, it's safe to assume that you'll be able to get an hour of light activity safely. You know. Benjamin, just in case anything crazy happens. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Can anybody hear the music? Ball. I can't hear it. Yep. I hear it's like... Yeah, faintly. It's quiet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Alright, I hear it now. Okay. Alright. So let's just say, you know, fast forward or whatever, everybody's eating... Yeah, everybody's been eating for a little bit, relaxing. Everybody's in a dining room. Being yeah. gator too. Say like fast word. Um, so, Alcaeus, do you have you have Alcaeus or Leister? Have either of you had a chance to walk around the city a little bit before you went out into the desert? We, uh, um, a little bit? A little bit. Yeah. It was a shop, I think. Right? Yes. Yeah, right, we, maybe. We went by that, um, Coliseum there. Um, went to a couple shops. the library. And the library, yeah. We haven't seen much, though, uh, you know. No. For the size of the city, we haven't really explored. Gone out and... Well, we know that Leicester is in need of some arrows. Hmm. Mm-hmm. If you feel like uh, heading, heading over to the shop, maybe introducing me to the shopkeep, and we see about getting some some of those for Leicester before we then meet up with Jakob. We're going to end up to the academy at some point. Uh, by the look of my armor, it's not going to last too much longer, but... I don't think we have enough coin to did buy me anything. Did, Eric. Yeah. Did did we lose all of Nat's share of the money? Um, uh, let me see. I'm please. Because that. No. that was a significant please. amount. Let's see. Was was everybody? You guys all split it up, right? Already. Yep. Yep. Yes. Right, I'm looking at his sheet, and he's only showing 200 gold. Oh, there was more than that because there was platinum involved. Yeah. Oh, and 22 platinum. Okay. Uh, you know what? 
200 gold will be in his room. We'll, we'll do that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, then Alcaeus would have found that in searching his room. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put the uh, amulet in the bag, and then I'll kind of toss on the table and be like, um, this was left behind. So I left it, so I'm glad he didn't have it on him. Um, as raise a little glass to him. Uh, so that's what Jakob was searching for. Mm. Yes. We managed and to find a few things. What, the amulet? That's, that's what this all was about, this thing? Mm. It sounds like it's yes. a little more than just the, just the amulet, just the, with it being that big shoulder necklace. But it it's a... Uh, was attached to some strange being. Maybe that adds its value, I'm not sure. I mean, it seemed like it was something magical about it. To an extent. I think he kind of mm. gave a brief description. Yeah. I, for, I forget it, and I didn't write it in my notes. Uh, I know it's something because it had to do with the jade. It has like a piece of jade in the middle, in the center of it, that did something. Yeah. People speak up. It's like, I, I believe it's um, supposed to make jade stuff magical, right? Something like that? Something? I didn't bother. Sure. I honestly I was only half paying attention to him. <laughs> Your memory's quite good, though, so I'll believe you. <laughs> but it's Jacob's, right? We're not give it back to him? Well, mm -hmm. I think the idea was that we would that we would go with Jacob and present it to the Academy. Essentially, mm -hmm. yes. essentially you know, we succeeded in not only getting rescuing Jakob, but also were a part in retrieving what they were looking for. Mm. Well, they might have so, a reward for us, so um, I mean, what are we waiting for? So we could, if they've got some sort of reward, we could do the uh, do the academy first if Jakob's ready for it. And then that might end up mean just meaning more coin to use at the shop. Mm. I don't know what they agree. I don't know if you, if your group agreed to a reward before you left, uh, before uh, since Pip and I kind of showed up in the middle of it. Uh, I think it was mainly just the retrieval of the person, not the object. Right, but just if there was some sort of reward for. Retrieving the person. Honestly, dying's left my head a little fuzzy, so. Fair enough. We might as well just head over and see what they have to say. Well, I'll, I'll pick up the necklace and I'll put it in my pack. And let's find Jakob and see if he's ready to head on over. Just as you say that, he kind of comes into the dining room. And you can see he's dressed up in his robes, his burgundy and gold trim robes, you know, um, you know, and he's wearing, you know, the, you know, a turban that's, um, you know, burgundy with gold trim. And he looks a lot neater than he was. And, um, you know, he comes and I guess he sees you all getting up, you know. So uh, it's, it's, it's good to see you again, okay. And um, thank you all again for, for coming to... To, to save me. Uh, so, be, before we go anywhere, though, um, can can I see the can I see the necklace? I'm not going to take it from you. I'm not going to even try. That's no problem. I'll take it back out of my pack and set it on the table in front of me. All right. You see, his eyes kind of get big, you know, a little bit when you put it down, and he kind of like, you know, walks over to it, you know, a little bit more rushed. And you know his normal casual walk or whatever, and he quickly uh, he, he picks it up and he kind of like bounces it in his hands a little bit, you know, like to feel the weight, and uh, he starts like kind of 
flipping it inside out and the, like each of these like gold plates has like a you know like a jade or you know some kind of green gem you know like a square green gem or whatever like on it and he starts like kind of flipping it around you know looking at each of them in turn and then he, you see him he goes ah and he puts it back down and he reaches into a pouch and he pulls out this little tiny uh like rolled up leather you know piece of leather i guess that's rolled up you know he unravels it and you can see a couple of little tools in there there's some like thieves tools in there you can see like a little like a jeweler's you know like uh like a, you know like a really small thin you know like screwdriver and there's like a little loop you know which you know the magnifying glass and you know all this other stuff and you see him and he flips over you know the necklace so now he's on the inside and he starts you know like i guess where the sensor piece would be you know he's he pulls out the little screwdriver and uh he starts unscrewing the back of of this uh of like one of these you know gold plates or whatever before you get too far messing with it Jakob, what's the what's the significance of this piece well i'm, I'm not sure yet but uh I'm, I'm i'm just i'm checking something you know so he keeps on unscrewing you know, and he seems just like really focused, you know, on that. Um, he seems almost like to reply just as a sign of courtesy than actually wanting to answer. You know, and um, he's there and uh, a, a little black plate, you know, he pulls out like these four little tiny screws, you know, and then uh, he gets like this little like a poker or, you know, like a dental tool or something. And he just like kind of pries it open and, it, and you just see like a little black void. You know, and he's there, and, and then uh, he kind of gets his fingers and, like, sticks it inside this little black void. You know, and they just kind of disappear. Like, there's no way that his fingers could fit, you know, in, you know, as deep as they are inside this thin, you know, gold plate. And he's there, and you see him kind of, like, look up to the, look up to the ceiling, like, almost in the corner of his eye, you know, as he's, like, kind of fishing around with his fingers in there. And then he goes, mm-hmm. And then you see him pull out this like rolled up piece of leather and it comes out and it's probably a good 18 inches long and then uh he's like okay he puts that underneath his arm and then he starts putting the the thing back together he puts the plate back and then he starts screwing it back into place this is what i was so, interested in and what would that be so this here is a culture map Oh. You, you know of that. We used to have one. We Where lost it, it on our journey. Uh, one of our companions had it on them when they were swallowed. Melika, right? Melika? Yes. I was going to, I was going to ask where, where the elf went. Um, what about the other guy? The seller of secrets. You know, he says it all sarcastically. He left in a more normal way. He just ran off. Wait. He ran? So we only lost Melika? Really? Mm. The yes, other person but I... ran like a coward? Mm. Into the desert. I don't imagine he got far, though. That makes me feel a little bit better that my death wasn't too in vain. Mm. I mean, to be fair, okay, so again, you, you may have lost a Melica, but you gained a full over in a pit. Well, I don't know how long I'll be here. Uh, this, I mean, I have to get back home. But maybe if the library is cool, I can um, maybe stay around, do some research, you know, help actually, you guys out on the side. Actually, Pip, um, there was something mm. that you mentioned a while back that caught my interest. Um, you, you, the way you spoke of the stars. And I was wondering if actually you would be interested in helping me do some uh, research on something that I've been working on for a little while now. Oh, yeah. That's, that sounds great. Okay, excellent. Better than walking 200 miles back to the woods. 200 miles? Why, is that where you're from? Yeah, 200, 250s, roughly. Oh, wow. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a journey. So, yeah. um, okay, yeah. Um, uh... Yeah, so he will kind of, you know, unravel the map, you know, and kind of lay it out on the table. And I'm trying to see if I... Uh, no, did I not upload it? Oh, shit. 
I'm so sorry, you're bad DM. Bad DM. <laughs> bad DM. Oh, here it goes. Okay. I will upload it right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I will wait, I will wait for you. Accidentally upload a cheat sheet. Let me see. Oh, I spelled it. Uh, can anybody see it? Yeah, it popped up. Uh, on the did you, did you see the actual map. map, though. Uh, not yet. It's just like an icon. It's like a little red piece of paper. Okay, there's a map. You can all see the map. But I have to prep it. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Alright, so yeah, he, he shows the map and um it is it looks like um like a partial coastal area with like a like a ring of water. So you know, surrounded by a bunch of like mountains and you know forest and whatnot, and um, in the center of the ring of water, there's like a mountain range, you know, in there, and uh, that's kind of what everybody's looking at. And I will get you a an actual. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, I think it's up. What about now? Can you guys see? Yeah, that? I can see. Oh, yeah. All right. So yeah, I can see. It. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, cool. So if you want to make it look bigger. You know, you can right click and open a new tab and you'll get like the full size. You know, make it a lot larger. But that's kind of what he's looking at. Do any of these cities or villages or anything sound familiar at all or are they to you? No, no, no. How about to Pip? To Pip? Um... You know what? Let me... Let me get a history check. History check? Oh, that's great. Now I got Photoshop opening up and I don't need it. Okay. Um... Bo Summit sounds Bo familiar Summit. to you. You don't really... You, the name sounds familiar. You don't really know anything else, though. But, but the name, you have heard the name. Um, I, I recognize that name of the summit there. Um, I don't know much about it, but at least I recognize it. Yeah, I'm not too sure about this myself. However, you see over here in the middle, 
see that arch? Mm -hmm. This this is uh, some kind of gateway, and I believe from the little bit of research I have done that these this gateway is one of others that can actually help us get back home. Oh. Never so. So wait, you mentioned Melika having one of these culture maps. Um, do you remember mm. seeing an arch on it? Yes. Not far from here, actually. Really? Mm. Yeah, just north of the village, right? Yes, near where the people said was some kind of fey plane. This is interesting. I believe it was around there. This is interesting. Um... Well, Do you have a local map? Will I be able to point it out? A local map? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I should. Um, let's mm. see. What we I almost find. wandered that way, actually, out of curiosity what that arch meant. Okay, let's see. Who, who has this map? Me. That's Hello. Me. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's in, well, it's in our cases, yeah. map thingies. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have a map case. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Um, so actually, actually, okay. Let me see. Actually. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to use this map. Uh, da, 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 da. Technically. <laughs> Technically. 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 Uh, let's see. He does have a local map. But it's it's uh it doesn't have the arch. It doesn't. Yeah, and I mean I don't have one. Stand far enough out. So I can get hmm. that to you. Okay. Okay. But uh, his map it shows. No, I... it was it was literally like a branch on the path. Like there was a way to this village and another way that led that way. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, like, from... like his uh, his map it shows a bot. You know, um, then it has Bakanunya on there. Um, has Tabubata, which is a, a town in between uh, Ibat mm -hmm. and Bakanunya on the western side, you know, but that's like mangrove swamps. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, just, you know, that, that's pretty much what his map has. Mm -hmm. Can we try to, like, point to the general area? Like, if we imaginary, like, extended the map north. <laughs> Ish. Mm. Um, like, hey, like, it's kind okay. of here. You know what? Let me get between one of you. Let me get a, a history check with advantage. Oh, don't stop me. Oh, don't no. do. Listen. Oh, fine. My, my mine's not good either. Ah, uh, you don't have oh, a well, minus well, four. <laughs> okay, mine's not quite that big okay, of a minus. Yeah. Okay, That's fine. not too bad. I mean, you guys are kind of. You know, discussing it a little bit here and there. And, um... You remember... That the road... That went from about to Bacanunya... There was an area... On the road that went to the east. And that area... Mm -hmm. or And that road led to... Yeah. Uh, the area where the arch was. Mm -hmm. Wow, I remembered that. My shitty memory. Yeah, so that's what you guys kind of remember from there. And um, if you were to just go straight up on the road, if you went straight up the road and then you went east, I mean, granted, you don't know how far it is, you know, um, but you feel that you could probably hit the, that bend in the road in uh, almost a day's travel. Maybe three quarters of a day, a little less, assuming there are no, no hiccups along the way. I mean, I'm interested in you. You all mentioned something about the uh, fate uh, gate to the Fey realm. 
that gets us a little closer to where I believe some of the old gods that seems to be I know that's uh, other planes of existence outside of here gets us a little closer to them These portals might be a way for me to, to reach my goals. Well, I'm sure that uh, maybe we can get some more information over at, at the academy. We have to go there anyway. You know, um, they they're the ones who are interested in this. Um, that's the whole reason for the expedition. So, and I'm sure you guys, you know, all runs for rewards. So whenever you're all ready, um, I'll have the carriage prepared and uh, we can head over to the academy whenever it's convenient for you. I stand up. <laughs> That's <Yeah>, convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Unless, unless anyone's got any objections, I think as soon as we get a carriage going, we head on over. Yeah, it's not like we have anything else to do. Precisely. I don't think Lysa is going to object. I'll just take baby so Lester has to follow. Uh. <laughs> All right. That works. That works. Alright, cool. So, um, I guess you all kind of like finish eating, drink up, you know, um, do you, are you going to clean up at all? Okay. Yeah. I kind of did that already. Let's just say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah, so you kind of clean up a little bit. And, Not like a complete, but like, at least like a Frenchman shower. Okay. Alright. Alright, so you will gather your gear. Okay, cool. Uh, you all gather your gear and go outside, um, and uh, you can see this this beautiful, you know, dark wooden carriage, you know, um, with the scorpion drawing it in the in the front. And uh, as the the door opens, the carpet comes rolling out into like this little slide, and then it stiffens into stairs. And uh, he will uh, he will you know after you. Thank you. Okay. I'll get out. Alright. Two, two of me get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hold on. Getting in the carriage? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. As you, uh, Magic. Yeah, as you enter this carriage, um, it's much larger inside than it is, you know, on the outside. Um, inside here is probably, you know, 20, 30 foot, you know, uh, room with um, nice, comfortable couches and and uh, nice like furniture and there's drinks and you know all different kinds of things in here in this little dimensional pocket and uh, he gets in closes the door behind him and uh, everyone can start hearing that you know as uh, as the this giant scorpion starts pulling the carriage you know and uh, you guys all spend a little bit of time in here I mean not too long Oops. <laughs> oh wow! Look at us go! No. Activate ludicrous speed. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, yeah, it doesn't take too long to get in there, you know, to get over to the academy. Uh, you guys actually want to go into the back area, and um, yeah, so maybe you know, twenty minute ride, give or take, you know, um, it all, you know, the carriage comes to a stop, he opens it, and um, and outside you are behind this very large sandstone building. You know, uh, the building itself is probably, you know, outside of the obelisk that's on top of it. You know, the walls are, you know, let's say 20, 30 feet for the first level. And then, you know, the second level, you know, underneath the obelisk goes up maybe another 15, 20 feet. And then the obelisk itself shoots up, you know, for like another 60 to 80 feet or so. And, uh, you know, he gets out and you know, he says, all right, come on, let's go and uh, let's go take care of all of this. Follow his lead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, cool. Um, he kind of, you know, uh, leads everybody in, you know, to like this little tiny courtyard, you know, that's in the back, and uh, you know, the carriage kind of just sits there and waits. And um, there's uh, a section of the wall, you know, that he kind of goes in front of, and he waves his hand, and like a door appears, you know, and then uh, he goes and you know touches the door, and you can all see like a, a, a bright. Uh, or like a faint flash of some kind of magical energy dissipate when he touches the door and then he opens it leading you know and it shows a, a hallway that probably goes for longer than this whole building is long it just seems like this really long hallway and uh, after you go I'll, I'll lead in okay you go inside everybody going in uh-huh all right, cool. Yes. Um, it's a lot more comfortable inside this building than it was outside, even though it's still relatively early. Let's say about you know 10 o'clock in the morning or so. Uh, it's still starting to get kind of warm out. So inside here, it's a lot more comfortable. And um, you know, as you all go in, he kind of you know makes his way up to the front of the of the group, and he leads you all. And um, you you walk for probably 150 feet, and um, it seems like the floor itself does not move, but the walls are moving. You know, so if you can imagine just the walls kind of sliding by you, but the floor, the tiles never change. And it almost seems like you're stepping in the same space over and over and over again. But, you know, just, you know, rough timing it, counting steps or whatever, you figure you travel for about 150 feet or so before another door opens, you know, and then he goes and opens this. And now you can see it, you're inside the library. You know, um, a couple of you have been here before uh, for the people who are new you just see like these huge walls of books that go all the way to the ceiling you know and there are aisles all over the place you know and like some of the walls are like shifting and you see like kind of books floating across here and there once in a while and um you see a bunch of what you would assume are some kind of arcane students you know wandering about all different races all different ages and um you know um it seems like the the people who are walking around in this library um, they seem to be color coordinated as far as their clothing goes. You know, um, like you'll see a group of three or four people and they're all wearing like gray robes. You know, then you'll see like a group of let's say six people and they all have, you know, like bright blue or bright red robes. You know, and um, you know, they're like kind of groups, like little cliques of these uh, similarly colored robe individuals, humanoids or whatever. Um, just kind of like in little clusters throughout the library. You know, and a couple of them, you know, look at the group. You know, as you come in, but, you know, they go back to doing whatever they were doing, studying, um, hushed conversations, you know, whatever. You know, um, then he uh, kind of, like, leads you through this stuff, through some, like, wall, uh, like winding, you know, aisles and whatnot, and it appears, and you go to, like, what you would assume is, like, let's say the front of this library. Um, you see, like, a really nice long countertop, you know, and there is a, uh, like, a, a little old gnomish woman. You know sitting at, at the uh at the at the front you know and um she's like kind of writing something you know on a book or whatever and she quickly turns around and looks at you and like her eyes look massive between behind these like glasses that are sitting on her nose you know so it's like the the magnification and she kind of blinks or whatever she's like oh yes 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 you made it back master Yakov. it's so nice to see you um this is this is great news um uh I, I'm sure she's just waiting for you. I mean, uh, have you spoke with her lately? You know, and uh, he's like, no, I, I have not spoken with the headmistress for this uh, in the last 24 hours or so. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I will go over, you know, with the with these fine individuals here. And um, she kind of looks over at the group and she's like, uh, some of you look a little different, but it's okay, you know, it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, great to see you, Master Jacob. Uh, for root and um, uh, yeah so go ahead you know um, so he will um, you know he'll, he'll like you know it's, it's almost like uh, he goes over there and he like quickly signs in you know um, on, the, on the counter or whatever and uh, you know he's like all right well you know thank you for the warm welcome Charlie it's always a pleasure to see you and, you know he'll, he'll take everyone to uh, you know this uh, this series of you know books on a wall and um, he quickly does a, uh, he gets kind of like surrounded in magical darkness and he looks at the group and uh, do you, uh, Fulver, do you want to hide the fact that you can see? 
I won't say anything specifically, but I, I'll take whatever info I do see. <laughs> he, uh, well, it's just, you know, this magical darkness, and um, he looks at the group, and he looks dead in your eyes. Do you look at his? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look past him, like look over past his shoulder. Him. Okay, uh, let me get let me get a deception check. Oh, okay. He kind of looks at you, and he's and he and he kind of he just looks at you, and you can tell. Actually, let me get an insight check from you. Can't tell shit. Okay, let's see. Or maybe you can. You, you, you can see that he, he, he knows what you're doing. And no, um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to look. I'm just, I just see. I'm not yeah. trying to. Be... So I mean, okay. So he can. He knows that you can see. You know, and um, I rolled a sixteen for him. And then, uh, I, to, to well. be honest, like I don't make it. I don't make a big deal at this point of just being able to see and things. Like that's just my life. So yeah, because that's just normal for you. So right. Um, so I, it's not like I'm trying to hide it either. Yeah. It's just. So so he. Everyone hears him say, "Please please turn around." And he's looking directly at you, Fulver. All right, that's odd, but all right, and I'll I'll turn around. All right, so uh, yeah, so you turn around, and then everyone can hear, you know, what you could assume is a book sliding, you know, like shh, and then everybody hears shh, and then the the darkness dissipates, and there is an opening inside this wall, and it leads down. Uh, you can see like another hallway that just seems to go for a long time, and uh, he's like, okay, that's that's what I try to go. Ah. Apologies. I I don't it, it's just second nature at this point. I didn't actually realize there was anything like uh, it, I, I can understand well, where you're coming from. Um we have similar gifts. And then uh, I see. Yeah, so um he starts he starts walking down, you know, this hallway. He's like, "All right, please come with me." I'll I'll follow. Leicester, Pebble Case. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Very cool. All right. So yeah, same same deal. You know, this hallway is. Um, it seems like the floor doesn't move, but the but the the walls, you know, keep on sliding, and it seems like this like there's a door that kind of approaches you, and after walking for a little bit, it just continues to stay the same distance the further you walk in, and then after a while, the door stops, and then he comes up, you know, to the door, and there's like little uh, pink torch lights. Like on, on the sides of each wall that kind of like so it's like as they pass you they kind of glow and then they you know and then they go out as they pass you and then the next set glows and then you know so it's kind of like uh you know if you've ever driven down a you know a tunnel or whatever and like the lights kind of come like zooming by and then uh, he goes to the you know to the door at the end which is just just this beautiful you know ornate uh wooden door with uh, all different types of, you know, like little carving and whatnot. Some of it seems to be of an arcane nature. Um, it seems to have a, a heavy, like a Selvan influence. You know, you can just tell by, you know, the, uh, like the strokes and, you know, the way it's carved out. And then he just does like a little, you know, tap on the door and, you know, tick, 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 tick. And then you hit on the inside. He's like, oh, please come in. You know, and, and then he opens, you know, door opens up. And um, inside here, there's like a, you know, like a 25, 30 foot diameter room that, um, you know, it, it's pretty tall, maybe like 25, 30 feet tall. And it seems like uh, on, on, the, on the far side, there's like a, a nice, beautiful desk, you know, where this um, like an old looking elven female stands. And like, I mean, she actually looks old, you know, so. Um, Fulver, let me let me just get an intelligence check from you. History or intelligence, if it makes a difference. It doesn't. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, she, she just looks old. 
And um, I mean, you know that elves don't start looking old until they're like really, really old. Right. Okay. So, um, I mean, you're probably guessing just by her physical appearance, she's probably at least a thousand. At least. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so surrounding, you know, these walls in this in this round room are, you know, same deal. There's like just uh, lots and lots of shelves with all these different books and stuff around it. And behind her is like this huge, uh, like a like a gothic cathedral arch kind of deal made out of like stained glass. And uh, you can't see through it, but there is light coming from from it, you know. And that seems to be like what's kind of illuminating, you know, this room. And she stands up with, you know, her frail elven body. She's still kind of, you know, she's tallish, maybe, you know, just over five and a half feet, long white hair, beautiful dress, you know. And, uh, uh, yes, please, please come in. It's just so good to see you, Master Furut. No, and, um, Leicester, Alkes, thank you, thank you. Plus, the new people, uh, thank you for doing this for us. Uh, Master Farood is a, a, a great asset to the to the Academy here, and uh, we, we do appreciate uh, you you bring him back safely. And then he's like, I have the map. Excellent. Please, let me see it. And uh, he goes to, you know, like, just kind of, like, offer it and this, uh, like, this really soft green, disembodied ghostly hand appears you know, um, and, and grabs the map and, you know, floats it toward her, you know, and then, uh, she kind of, like, just, like, it's floating up in the air, you know, and it, like, kind of pinches the map from the top and, like, just kind of shakes it and then it unravels, you know, and, and the map falls down, you know, still being held up from this, this, uh, pale green spectral hand. She's like, hmm. Okay, this is good. Um, where are you going? To need to study this a little bit, so um, it, it's it's going to take some time. But uh, as far as your reward is concerned, you know, um, how does uh, 1,500 gold coins each sound? <coughs> That's very generous of you. Well, I mean, very generous. Master Farid here is, like I said, he is, he is a great asset, and um, it is very well worth the, you know, the price. Um, besides, um, and, and, you know, you can you can take the coin, or, you know, if you prefer, like, an item, or gems, or jewelry instead, you know, um, we can do all of that for you. I mean... That's generous. Right. If you're offering some ideas of some of uh, any particular items that might help in some journeys, so wouldn't mind looking or seeing what it is you're offering. Um, it's uh, it's it's more like uh, what do you want? I'll see if I have, or or maybe we can make it for you, depending on I how much time you have. I think I asked for armor last time, but that was a no-go, so I might take the 1500 and just go get it made or bought at another store. It's, it's completely understandable. Unless you do have armor, and you were just lying to me last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it, 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 it's, been a, a, it's been a few days now, so I mean, our inventory might have changed. You know, and I mean, I'm sure you're looking for permanent item, not something that like an artificer would make. Right. And uh, besides, um, where did you guys... Oh, Logan has that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, there, there, I do believe there was a bag of holding that was all known. Oh. You all had a bag of holding? Uh, the one that Logan. ran. Really? You if go. you have a way to track it, you might be able to find it, but I'm afraid you ran off with it. Um, I mean, track. we can definitely track it. Um, it might just be funnier to have the magic cancelled wherever they are. What of the, the pink sphere? Do you have that? Ah, 
Yes. Leister will figure out which pocket of his baby stashed it in <laughs> and pull it out. <laughs> okay. Alright. Um, was there anything else? I'm sorry, my, my mind is not what it used to be. We got most of the scorpions back to you, except for a few, I'm afraid. Yeah, those are expendable. I'll deal with Shimali. Alright, mm-hmm. so, um. Alright, so the the sphere, you know, she'll kind of like reach her hand out for it so you can hand it to her. Mm hmm. Right, and you give it to her, and she just quickly, you know, it, uh, it kind of pulses, you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, like real, real, like in, intently, and then she just kind of waves her hand over it, and it stops. And then she's like, "Yeah, for your little friend," and she hands it back to you. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah, no problem. I'm gonna have a hard time finding a replacement. No, no, this is fine. This is, you know, you can you can keep the the quartz. We just enchanted it to help look for Master Farod here. So, um, so yeah, so that, that, uh, it's like a rose quartz sphere, you know, and what was it, like the size of a baseball, right? I think so. So let's just say, let's say it has a value of 300 gold pieces. And this is super high quality, you know, like, um, it can be enchanted, just for future reference. Mm-hmm. Bloody rose quartz sphere. I e baby. Okay, well, um, if uh, I guess you know, you can go to the front where Jarly is, and um, she will, she will uh, get your coin to you, in whichever way you want. All right. Thank you. All right, and then he says, um, Jakob is you know, he's, Thank, thank you so much for sending them out as quickly as you did. Um, this person here, uh, Pip, was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, Pip, Pip has agreed to kind of help me in my research. Um, he has this uh, weird ability where he can like turn into the stars or something. But um, you know, I'm sure we can all learn from each other. So, uh, so he'll stand up, you know, real quick and say, um, "All right, so uh, forward, Lyser." Sir Kiss, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, you know, if, if you'd like, uh, just, you know, go see Jarly up front. She will take care of you all. Um, Pip, I'll make sure that your coin is brought to you. And then if you'd like, you know, go and explore the town. And, um, you know, you're more than welcome to stay at my house for as long as you need. It's the least I can do. So, uh, you know. So I guess, you know, that, that's, that's it for now. You know, and then he'll come and give everybody like a big, you know, forearm handshake kind of deal and pat you on the, you know, the shoulder with the opposite hand and you know, stuff like that. You are all very brave. I thank you again. Glad we were able to help you out. Uh, the predicament you were in was not one that uh, I would envy anyone in. Mm, it uh, t- uh, did not go exactly as we had hoped, but but the mission was a success. Regardless, um, thanks to you all again. So, Maybe next time you just bring us from the start instead of sending us out after. You know, that is actually something I want to speak with the headmistress about. Yeah, well, don't let us stop you. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, all right, so who's leaving? He has my raccoon. I follow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll follow the group. All right. So as soon as you guys leave, you know, like when you leave this door, it, it puts you right into the library. Like you don't have to walk through that hallway again. And then, uh, you know, as you all step out the, you know, it's like that, that door, um, you can hear a sliding, but like, as you step out, it's like that door was, I mean, that, that wall of books, it was, it's there. You know, so as soon as you step out and look behind you, you can see it's already there, and then you can hear a slide like, 
you roll in the library. I don't understand anything that just happened in that hallway. I don't think unless you're part of the Academy you're really meant to. Something magical. That's about it. See a little magic mouth appear right before you guys? And a little hand appears in front of it and it's like, shh. The Leicester just slowly, quietly inches away. (laughs) Apparently we have to whisper. I'm afraid to talk ever again. <laughs> what do you guys Just talk again? outside. I right, gotta go get money and or items. <laughs> so I got items are an option. I gotta figure out what I would want to request. I've not thought about that. So you guys are gonna all go up to the front counter where Charlie is? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. Were you gonna say something, Lester? No. Oh wait, yes, I, I remembered. Lister will look for pink spiders. Let me get a perception check. I remembered. I remembered that I forgot instantly. Uh, nope. Do not see any pink spiders. Mm. Money, please. Right. So, uh, yeah, you'll uh, wander through the library a little bit, go up to the front counter see the gnomish, the old gnomish woman in the gray robes with the big glasses. And she's like, um, how exactly would you like your coin? Standard in coin gems, form. items, scrolls, diamonds. Nice to look confused at the others. <laughs> I'd like to be fair, I'm not really quite sure. The items kind of intrigue me, but I'm not quite sure what I'd be asking for. Um, well, uh, he's, he's kind of a list of things that, you know, we, we sometimes take care of. You know, she pulls out, like, this book, you know, and she kind of, like, dumps it on the counter, you know. And on the front of it, it says, Sane Magic Item Prices. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> right. It's more the picking out the... It's more, pick, it's more looking through and comparing and seeing what I want. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, um... So... Everyone, you know, will be able to get the coin, the gems, however they want, or, you know, um, just look at the, you know, um, if you don't have it, you know, if you Google same magic item prices, um, there's a PDF that pops up and those, that's the price list that I use for the most part. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, whenever you guys get a chance, you know, um, cause today we're only going to do half a session. You know, because uh, I want to get the other people in. So, um, I guess, you know, this might be a good place to wrap it up. So, I guess, you know, throughout the week or whatever, go ahead and take a look through that list. And um, let me know if there's anything that you're interested in. And then, I guess, you know, I'll roll a percentage or whatever to see if they have it, depending on what it is. You know, um, if there's something not listed, you know, because that book... Or that that list is actually kind of old. That came. I mean, that probably has like the DMG, maybe the SRD. That's six yeah. years old now. Yeah, yeah. So that that list is really old. There's going to be a lot of the newer items that just are not included in there because it was never updated, to my knowledge. So if there's something else that you want that's not on that list, you know, just send me, a, you know, send me a message through Discord, and then you know we'll just take care of it, you know, whenever it's convenient for you guys, you know, throughout the week. Um, but just for, you know, samples or whatever, um, I believe a plus one weapon is like 1500 so that would take everything. Um, the, the armor, same deal, plus one armor is going to be 1500 plus the cost of the armor, you know. Um, plus the cost of the armor. Plus the cost of the armor, yeah, that's to avoid cheese plate, you know. <laughs> um, you know, so it just depends on, you know, what it is. So, um, yeah, so go ahead and, you know, do that whenever it's convenient for you, and, uh, we're going to wrap it up here. You know, so um, good game, everyone. You know, we finished up that little arc, which is nice. Yay. You know, and then uh, hopefully yeah. next week we will have at least one other player joining us. Uh, we're supposed to be doing our session zero on Saturday. And then another player should be hopefully joining us in another two weeks after that. So, uh, you know, um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, if you guys, you know, want to go shopping, you know, we don't have to do that in game. You know, so like, you know, just to, you know, take a look through everything 
And um, if you guys want to just do shopping and do whatever, just send me a list. And I will tell you how much it all costs. And then you can all, you know, adjust your coin from there. So, um, so remember, so each person has right now a 1,500 gold piece credit. Okay. And there was an extra 200 gold and 22 platinum. That was found on, uh, in, in the room. And uh, is anybody going to attune to that necklace? Uh, I mean, Do you well, want it, it was it, all it all it did was it made Jane items magical. So uh, yeah, which I mean, I have a Jade Warhammer, but right. I mean, that's for you. Yeah. You're the only one yeah. working with Jade right now. Yeah, I was just going to like hold on to it to see if anybody bought like if Leicester bought like Jade tipped arrows or something. Like maybe having those plus one arrows would be better, but we'll just hold on to it for now. Say so my my sword's already my my weapon is already considered magical. Right. By its existence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so um Okay, so whatever. And if if somebody does wind up attuning, just just let me know. Um I'm I'm wearing the ring, I went ahead and put but it doesn't take a two minutes, so okay, I yeah, have swim speed. Yeah, so you put that on your finger and, you know, it shrinks or grows a little bit to fit you snugly. Cool. All right. Any questions, anybody? Um, is adamantine armor considered, like, magical for here? Would it deteriorate, or...? Um, adamantium, that's like... I, uh, you know what, let me, let me Google that. You know, in between sessions, just to see if it's a ferrous metal. You know, cause, I mean, if it's a ferrous metal or, or considered a ferrous metal, then then it's going to rust. Mithril would be safe. I know that much. It's really Because that's kind of like aluminum, you know, or whatever, what I would imagine to be kind of like fantasy aluminum because it's lightweight mm -hmm. and all that shit. Um, but I, I can actually see the dwarven adamantium probably rusting. But actually, isn't it considered magic? I don't know. Let me Google that before I answer. You know, um, oh, I could get Mithroplate. <laughs> yeah, Mithroplate is nice. You know, yeah, you plate plate armor that does not uh, does not instill disadvantage on stuff. Yeah, Mithril. He don't care about. It. I don't think okay, so oh, care about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I mean, uh, yeah. Just go ahead and think about it. Um, do some research. Do whatever. Send me a PM through Discord, and you know we'll just take care of it between sessions. Um, so yeah, I guess we're gonna wrap it up here, right? So uh, good game, everyone. <laughs> and um, I guess this is just for the YouTube people because we didn't stream today. But uh, you know, if you like this video and you want to show us some love, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notifications. So you can see when the new stuff is getting uploaded, so you don't miss these awesome adventures that we're having. Um, you can always show us some love on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash the D20 initiative. You know, uh, you can always show Landon some love. Check them out on Twitter and Instagram um, at forever cafe underscore, you know, and um, yeah. So uh, great game and uh, hope to see you next week. So uh, is it Wednesday yet? Yay. Good night, people. Peace. Peace. Peace.